The retro look of VHS video emulation is really popular right now. I've seen a lot of effects in videos that try to mimic the look of an old VHS videotape. It's a pretty cool nostalgic throwback. Often, however, these effects filters will use things like chromatic aberration and imitation scan lines to try to reproduce the look. While this might be fine for producing a certain aesthetic, it's usually not technically accurate. What I have found works well for emulating the VHS look isn't 100% accurate either, but it does kind of come close. Well, sort of. I had to do a ton of research on the characteristics of the format back when I digitized my entire library of VHS home movies and I learned more than I ever thought I'd need. And I got some ideas in the process. Now, of course, to truly achieve the look of an actual VHS tape, your best bet is to get an adapter to convert between digital and analog video and simply record and play back from an actual VHS tape deck. But if that's not an option, since many of us don't have analog equipment or a way to convert the signal, there are a few ways to mimic the characteristics of VHS just using software. I won't get too specific about how to use these effects, but they rely on some very basic image and video editing capabilities that most modern editing software will support. In other words, this is going to be more of a general guide for the most part. I will do a little bit of an After Effects based tutorial. First, however, I'm going to talk a little bit about analog video from a technical perspective. Now bear with me. It's important to cover this in order to explain the techniques for reproducing the look. The video standard I will reference going forward will be NTSC, which is the Analog Video Broadcast Standard in North America. And for simplicity's sake, I will assume an image output resolution of 720 by 480 pixels for the digital equivalent. Unlike digital video, which is made of discrete 1 and 0 values and complex patterns to define image data, analog video is based on the concept of an ongoing change in voltage over time. These changes in voltage are divided into lines and then fields. A field of video is basically a set of odd or even lines. The standard for interlaced video, including what VHS tapes store and analog broadcast television, does not send or store a complete frame of video captured in an instant, like on film. Instead, the odd and then the even lines are used separately. Digital video can be interlaced too, by the way. The video signal is essentially a two-dimensional concept, voltage and time, which is divided up into derived horizontal and vertical dimensions as well as fields and frames. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to capture an analog video signal, but not with a video capture device. We're going to capture an analog video signal from this camcorder as audio. And why the heck would we do that? Well, it's for doing some very basic signal analysis. Alright, now, to do that, I'm going to need an adapter. Composite analog video connections usually use an RCA connector. So to feed that into a laptop, I'm going to adapt this RCA plug to a 1 8 inch microphone jack so that the signal can be recorded on the computer via the microphone jack. Now we're going to record the resulting audio signal using the highest sample rate possible. It's important to point out that the sample rates of even the highest-end sound cards aren't sufficient for the amount of bandwidth in a video signal, which is around 3 MHz. For comparison, the standard bandwidth of CD quality audio is 22 kHz, and the sample rate has to be double whatever the analog bandwidth is. To capture the full video signal, we'd need a computer that could capture at a sample rate of 6 MHz. The best we can do here is 384 kHz, but that's okay because we're not going to reproduce the video signal. We're only going to use it to get a general idea of the analog signal's composition. Here's the captured signal. sounds like a buzz at 60 Hz with tons of harmonics, which is the same frequency you'd hear from power line noise. That's no coincidence, by the way. It's by design, to avoid interference in the picture by unharmonious frequencies. 
Specifically, the noise in this signal is due to the rate of 60 video fields per second. And in case you're curious, here's what our experimental video capture looks like when we convert it back to video. So much high frequency detail in the signal was lost that even the sync is lost, which is why the vertical holds going nuts. We can still see vertical resolution in the picture here, but horizontally it's a total blur. Alright, alright. Hold the phone. Uh. How in the world is this relevant to emulating the VHS look? Well... We have to understand that the full bandwidth of this signal wasn't preserved in our experimental capture. We have a rough approximation of the signal, one that we can hear and view as a waveform, but the high frequency detail essential to the horizontal resolution was completely lost. On a VHS tape, far more bandwidth is available than in our little experiment but it is still significantly less than the full original bandwidth of the analog video signal. Specifically, VHS has about 3 MHz for the overall signal, which may sound sufficient, but it only has 400 kHz for the color part of the signal. The reason VHS has a limited bandwidth is because the tape moves relatively slowly even though it uses a trick involving the signal being recorded in diagonal stripes on tape to fit more signal in less space. In our experiment, the discrete number of video lines, 262 per field, odd and even, are still well defined to make up the vertical resolution of the video, but the continuous voltage changes within the lines which makes up the horizontal resolution is, as you can see, entirely lost as a blur. VHS preserves much more of this horizontal resolution, but not all of it. And now that we know the overall horizontal detail in an image has to be degraded or blurred, we also have to consider something else in the VHS look. The color of an image suffers a far worse degradation in resolution. Now why is that? In an analog video signal, the color information is actually stored separately from the luminance signal or brightness. The color and brightness of the image are separated and the television actually has to reassemble these two when reproducing the image. Okay, let's get down to what the digital rough equivalence of this signal degradation should be. For the luminance channel, we are going to have an equivalent resolution of 333 pixels across. We don't mess with the vertical resolution because the visible image in analog video, assuming we're using the NTSC standard, is 480 lines. The other 45 lines, which are outside of the visible picture, are used for color burst and synchronization. So in Photoshop, we can either convert our image to lab mode or duplicate the layer and make the top layer's blending mode a color overlay and make the other layer desaturated or black and white. In most image or video editors, this layering technique should work for separating color and luminance. The important thing here is that we can work with color and brightness separately in order to reduce their horizontal definition independently. So now our luminance channel is 333 by 480. Having lost the original horizontal resolution, I'll resize it back to the original resolution, which is 720 by 480. And if you really don't want to mess with all this resizing business, you can just use a horizontal directional blur to mimic this. In fact, it's far easier in a video editor to do it that way. And we're going to take our color channel, or layer, and do exactly the same thing, but the horizontal resolution for color in a VHS tape signal is only the equivalent of 40 pixels wide. Again, if you don't want to mess with resizing, you can just blur it a lot more. I am also adding some noise to both layers before lowering the horizontal resolution because all analog signals have at least some random noise in them. Pretty much all video editors have effects that allow adding grain or noise. Now, depending on the image or video editing software, we're going to composite the image back together. I'm going to show you how I do it in After Effects. This is a very general overview of how to create the effect of VHS video and the very limited color bandwidth of the format. I'm doing this in After Effects here, but the technique should be similar in most video editing software. 
Okay, first, make two tracks or layers. The lower one is going to be our luminance channel, and the top one is going to be our color or chroma channel. Set the blending mode on the top track to color. The lower track, our luminance track, should use a desaturate or a black and white filter to completely remove color from that track. We only want the other track to contain the color information. Use a grain or noise filter to add a little bit of noise to our luminance or black and white track. Alright, add a directional blur or a horizontal blur to the luminance track. Not too much, but just enough to soften it a bit. Do not blur it in the vertical direction. And now we want to apply the same noise and horizontal blur effects to the chroma, or the color, track. But we want to increase the amount of noise somewhat, and we want to greatly increase the horizontal blur on the color track. Remember, we are simulating a horizontal definition of only about 40 pixels for a digital equivalent, so it should mimic what would happen if we scaled it down and then back up, which would cause it to lose a ton of detail horizontally. Okay, so here's a test video for a before and after comparison. Here's the original quality video for this test. And here's the VHS effect. And original quality again. And now with the VHS look. So the effect that I've covered here in this video only mimics the bandwidth limitations involved with the VHS signal. Actual VHS tapes have signal dropouts, tracking noise, and all kinds of other artifacts. So this simulation is definitely not 100% authentic. As mentioned before, to get the perfect VHS look, it's best to actually record and play back a video through a real VHS tape deck. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you all again soon.